In this video, we're going to talk about the blood supply of the brain, and in particular, an arterial structure known as the Circle of Willis. Most of the blood flow to the brain and the upper spinal cord comes from the carotid arteries in the neck, which you can easily feel as a bounding pulse when you place a finger on either side of your neck in the soft spot just lateral to the trachea. The carotid arteries divide into the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery. As the external carotids split off to supply blood to the face and neck, we will instead follow the internal carotids which go on to supply the brain. After traveling further up the neck, the internal carotids reach the underside of the brain and join what is known as the Circle of Willis. Knowing the structure of the Circle of Willis is absolutely crucial to understanding the effects that bleeds and blockages in various arteries will have on a clinical level, so we're going to make sure that we have this down cold before we move on. At first glance, the Circle of Willis looks incredibly daunting with its nonlinear structure and many branches off of the main loop. But let's see if we can simplify it down as much as possible and maybe even be able to draw most of it from scratch entirely by memory. Let's start by drawing a circle, which is a good starting place for something called the Circle of Willis. Let's then write the word Willis going around the circle, starting at the bottom and going clockwise. First, we'll draw an upside down W at the bottom, then an I in the upper left, two L's together at the top, another I in the upper right, and finally a sideways S at the bottom just below the W. And, would you believe it, that's the head of the Circle of Willis. Now we just need to label all the parts. The major components of the Circle of Willis are the three pairs of cerebral arteries. The upside and down W at the bottom represents the two posterior cerebral arteries. The eyes in the middle represent the middle cerebral arteries, which, you should make a note, are direct continuations of the internal carotid artery. And finally, the two L's at the top are the anterior cerebral arteries. The circle itself is made up of two communicating arteries, the short anterior communicating artery in between the two L's and the longer posterior communicating arteries making up the bottom half of the circle. But wait, didn't we forget the S in Willis? Indeed we did. That's because the S no longer represents the cerebral artery, but instead is the first pair of arteries supplying the cerebellum, the superior cerebellar arteries. And this reminds us that we are not yet done. There is a whole lot more to discuss, but before we move on, make sure that you know everything we've covered so far. In fact, I would suggest that you pause the video, get out a blank piece of paper, and draw and label the Circle of Willis until you're able to do it entirely from memory. See you in a bit! Okay, and we're back. Hopefully you're able to draw the Circle of Willis from memory now, because we're about to use that as the basis to learn the rest of the arteries supplying the brain and spinal cord. Don't be afraid. We're able to memorize the Circle of Willis in just a few minutes, and I promise you we will do the same with the rest of this figure. For this, we're basically drawing a stick figure, with the head being the circle that we already drew. For consistency, let's name our new stick figure Willie. First, draw Willie's neck. This is the basilar artery from which many small pontine arteries branch off. Next, draw his arms. These are the anterior inferior cerebellar arteries. From there, draw Willie's two legs. These are the vertebral arteries. The posterior inferior cerebellar arteries form short branches off of the vertebral arteries, which we can conceptualize as large, overgrown toenails. Finally, this particular stick figure has a tail the anterior spinal artery in between his legs. And that's it! You now know how to draw the Circle of Willis and the associated arteries going to the midbrain, cerebellum, and spinal cord. All you need to be able to do is to draw a circle, write the word Willis, and then use that as the head of a stick figure with long toenails and a tail. Not so bad, is it? Before we move on, however, there is an important point to note. Despite how it may appear, the vertebral arteries are not a continuation of blood flowing down from the basilar artery. Instead, they help bring blood up from the neck to the heart. In this way, the Circle of Willis has two primary blood supplies, the internal carotid arteries in the front and the vertebral arteries in the back. These two sets of arteries effectively form a bridge between the anterior and posterior circulation. This pattern of having multiple redundant connections between blood vessels 
known as anastomoses, is common in the brain and helps to preserve such a vital organ. If blood supply were to become compromised in any one artery, the other arteries would be able to compensate for this and make sure that all parts of the brain still get the blood they need. For example, if one internal carotid artery were to become blocked, the other internal carotid artery, as well as blood originating from the vertebral arteries and passing into the anterior circulation by way of the basilar artery, could help to make up the difference. Nevertheless, various situations can create blockages that are severe enough that not even these anastomoses can fully compensate, which can lead to injury and even death of brain tissue. This is known as a stroke, and we'll talk about this more in a future video. Okay, that's it for now. To keep this all together in your mind, take a few minutes to make sure that you can draw this whole system from scratch. Once you can do that, you're ready to move on to the next video. Good luck!